Welcome to No Border Blues with Johnny Bergen and Stephanie Tice, a podcast about international blues artists you should know about and the sometimes surprising hidden blues scenes around the world. Johnny is a Delmark recording artist who regularly tours and collaborates with international blues players. And Stephanie recently produced the No Border Blues Japan CD, the first American compilation of the underground Japanese blues scene. This show is sponsored by Chicago Blues Network, bringing Chicago blues to the world. Hi, welcome to No Border Blues. Today we have Prakash Slim, who is a pre-war acoustic blues player from Nepal, who has really been making a name for himself in the blues world and as a blues educator. So uh, welcome, Prakash. Welcome, Prakash. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. So you started as as an electric guitar player, and you actually traded a bicycle for your first guitar, right? Tell us that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, in the beginning of my uh, blues era, uh, when I started playing blues, uh, I was in band, several bands, and then I played electric uh, rock blues style. But I shifted to the country blues style after my research in blues from Mount Zion Memorial Fund, uh, from Mississippi. Uh, yeah, um, I, I read in your bio that, that you played in a lot of bands that played instrumental music too. Is that really popular? Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was very popular in our uh, society that we played uh, like uh, Western instrumental numbers, uh, yeah, then uh, Indian instrumental numbers. We, ha we had just violin, then drums, uh, mandolin. Uh, guitar, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, bass. So that was popular at that time. Wow, you know, the story of trading um, your bicycle for a guitar, it, it reminds me of the Yank Rachel story. He had a pig that he traded for his first mandolin when he was a little boy, <laughs> and his mother wasn't too happy about that. How, how did your folks feel about you getting so interested in the guitar? So I was interested in music uh, since I was a child. Uh, I would play music by drumming against a war gallon and sing songs all day while I on the radio. Uh, I was crazy about guitar, but I didn't have money, so we are from very uh, limited family. Uh, so uh, when I passed grade 10, my sister gifted me a bicycle. Uh, so I sold my bicycle and bought a guitar, lying my family that one of my friends had taken out a few days. That was my first guitar. So I, I was crazy about the guitar. What? Well, I'm gonna let, I'll ask you one more question and I'll let Stephanie no, take over. Go for a roll. But, <laughs> you know, it's a big change to go from playing in a band to playing by yourself and playing acoustic. So, you know, how did this happen to you? Well, uh, after uh, earthquake hit in Nepal in 2015, uh, we we didn't get the gigs and the programs in a band. The just restaurant and the venues are just closed. And I was just in, in frustration, like uh, what to do? I can't play music. I know where to go. Uh, that time for about about one one or two years, uh, we didn't in band. So that time I was uh, just I felt sick, very sick, and uh, in a bed rest. Um, then I thought I just. Um, saw a post in Facebook, uh, Acoustic Blues Pickers. Then I thought I I should just start uh, how it goes. Uh, Robert Johnson, Charlie Patton, like the songs uh, already. We I would listen that kind of traditional blues, and I I just picked a number. Then th that went uh, good, and I got a good response from their uh, fans from the United States and the other countries. Then I uh, I thought I would start that kind of traditional blues style. And then I got the uh, bottleneck slide and other stops like that, country and delta sound. Wow. Yeah, great. I see you kind of call yourself the ambassador of the blues as well, an educator as well. Um, I've been watching you on Facebook interacting and kind of getting a name for yourself for your country in Nepal. And I show, saw your radio interview as well. I just wondered um, who. What inspiration did you get of blues artists? I, I noticed Robert Johnson is a, a great one too, but tell me what inspired you to kind of go into the deep 
traditional blues? Well, uh, when I heard uh, Charlie Patton, Robert Johnson, Bucca White, Fred McDowell, like uh, the country blues legends, though, uh, I found that uh, Robert's like uh, his techniques like uh, chordal harmony, double stop slides. Then I found that uh, shuffle, boogie boogie, everything was there. Uh, went through Robert Johnson, he's my idol, and Charlie Patton's hard driving rhythm, beautiful single berry slide, uh, Bucca White's uh, unique techniques, uh, dampening, then uh, uh, slapping. Uh, that awesome slide techniques so it touched me and then I, I'm so influenced from their uh, country blues legends. So do you relate to some of the lyrics? I mean, the lyrics are about something different in our culture and hardships. Do, is there a parallel with some of the hardships? Do you think around the world, you know, whatever country, relating to some of the hardships in the, in the lyrics? Well, I, I think um, if we talk about the uh, pre-war blues era, uh, that time the lyrical content were the very meaningful. And that time, uh, like Charlie Patton's, Robert Johnson's, like flooding, gambling, um, uh, drawn, yeah, everything was there. Uh, but lately, uh, in, in post-war blues, we just uh, uh, trying to limit it in some eras of economic status and the, that's the women and then other things like that. Um, so um, I think every song I heard about Charlie, Buka, Sunhouse, Sunhouse even, uh, Rob Johnson, uh, you know, if you feel that song, I, I think that was the, the example of the hearts and the, everything was there. Yeah, and if you look at the lyrics of, of so many of the pre-war blues masters and stuff, it's a total picture of what life was like for black people really? at that time. Um, as I, it's kind of like a giant mosaic. Of, everyone has a, had a little piece of the mosaic and the whole picture was was what their life was like. Yeah, really, really, yeah, I've been so. Do you, I noticed you uh, mentioned Blind Blake um, in, your, like, in your bio. Do you play ragtime as well? That's really hard stuff. <laughs> I didn't do much, but I played that Polystock Blues and then uh, like that uh, one song Lisa from him. Blues? Is that what you said? Uh, Polystock Blues, Polystock oh, Blues. Oh boy, yeah. That's a tough uh, one. Uh, I was influenced uh, by that song. Uh, I played uh, once or twice. Uh, and lately I started playing bottleneck slides. I, I just thought that it's an easy way to do that bottleneck slide and all this stuff like... Uh, you're going to have no, to no, no, guitar yes. lesson, man. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Uh, would you like to play a song for us? And what song have you chosen to play for us tonight? I'm going to uh, sing a song called Living for the Memory. Uh, this song is written just by me and my friend Henry D. Jones from USA. Uh, song is just, uh, the song is uh, about my frustration and depression when I was that time. Uh, just what to do, nothing to do in music. Uh, I was depressed by music, so I wrote this song, Lil About Love, so I'm gonna oh. sing this song, Living for the Memory. Thank Living you. for the Memory by Prakash Slim. Yes. my bad. 
country delta blues player uh, i don't get uh, gigs and uh, venues here uh, i rarely play i last time i before one year i played once in a restaurant i don't get uh, i don't most um, venues and then uh, we don't have uh, venues like other for other for, for other rock blues artists so there is only centered and the limited very limited venues and uh, only in town they are centered in town so uh, in my scenario i don't get uh, the venues that's my unfortunately though so i want to be there and so play everywhere in the world unfortunately i, I don't have that kind of venues i have thank you for a musician anywhere it takes a lot of persistence and perseverance and yes. drive because just because you want to play something doesn't mean other people want to listen to it <laughs> <laughs> or pay you for it no matter who you are or where you're from and um but coming from Nepal, it's, yep. I'm sure it's even harder. So you have really, I mean, when I read your bio and when I see what, what you do, um, you've continued to really put yourself out there and accomplish a lot. And, um, you know, great work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. Maybe we can get you out to the U.S. sometime. I'm sure you'd enjoy going to the crossroads because you sing about the crossroads. And it would be an uh, uh, experience, I think, for you to go down to the Mississippi Delta and experience some of the places that these songs were written. Um, so that would be nice. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I just uh, just want to be there once in my life in Mississippi and playing a national guitar. That's my uh, life's one motto. So I don't know who it could be. Have you heard about the IBCs, you know, the international blues competitions that happen in uh, Memphis in January? Yeah. yeah. Are you coming out for that or? No, no, no. Uh, uh, actually, if I don't get any invitation at the sponsorship from there, uh, it's very hard to get the uh, visa from US Embassy in Nepal. So it's very hard to get there. I mean, you're playing really well. Just keep keep doing your thing and um you know this is kind of a whole international yeah fellowship and, and you know things are gonna things will come around things are gonna click and, and um 
Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I'm doing my best. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is usually Stephanie's question, but she always asks about um, singing and writing in your, in your native language. Yeah. Any um, thoughts about that? I'm always interested in artists um, who write their own songs, if they think it out in their own language and then translate it to English, or is it always English, or do you have special songs that you sing in your native language um, at any time in blues? Uh, yeah, uh, one, I have a few songs I do compose in my native language. Uh, I have one song called Corona Blues, that's in Nepali version. Uh, uh, this song uh, I wrote during pandemic. Uh, Can you play that? We'd love to hear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the song is all about the uh, problems we're facing during this pandemic, especially for daily needs. Uh, for like foods and the gas. Uh, so the song tells about like that, don't have a cooking gas, so how do I cook the prepare meal? Uh, if I were a rich man, the things comes easily at home. Uh, please, Corona, go away. Yeah, we're just dying for it like that. Okay. okay. <laughs> language <laughs> so is there, is there anything else you'd like to say to uh i, I think people really are, are following your music you know i mean you're, you're you're sort of generating like a grassroots internet worldwide presence you know and uh is there anything you want to say to your fans uh yeah please uh love my music i just want to play everywhere i go I want to play in Europe, South America, America. Just want to do blues and blues education. You can give us some uh, website and the way that people get in touch to you, with you or you're on Instagram, Facebook, whatever other social media, be sure to get that to us and we'll be sure to put that in uh, the No Border Blues at the end, okay? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. I think well, that wraps it up. Yeah, what city do you live in? Uh, I'm in Lalitpur, you know, Lalitpur. 
Is it a big city? Uh, here in Nepal, we call it big city, but I'm a little bit far from the city. You're a country boy. Country boy. Yeah. Playing the country blues. Country blues there yeah. in Nepal. Trying my best there. Yeah. Trying yeah. just time. Great. All well, right. thank you so much for joining us. And this is actually, I think, one of the first um, No Border Blues at our new recording studio here in Norfolk, Virginia. So oh, it's not really a recording studio. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll be in touch. My nice. sure. Yes. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was a great pleasure to talking to you both. Yeah, I like the way you play. You have a really good, solid groove, and you know you just put so much sincerity into it. So just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Okay, Prakash, take care, man. Take care. Bye for okay, now. Bye bye. This has been No Border Blues with Johnny Bergen and Stephanie Tice. 